on the fray. I say I'm living on the fringe. Okay, speaking of great live theater, here we go. Their next production is called The Singing Rabbi. And it's starring actually a friend of mine, um, Leah Solomon. And Leah and I go back, oh, a while. We go back a while. We, we go back a while. But anyway, we're here now. So she's doing a story of um, kind of a true to life story. It's the story of a woman whose successful open heart surgery leaves her with a visit from the goddess which catapults her into becoming, well, it catapults her out of Los Angeles into Tel Aviv, where she eventually becomes an Israeli citizen. She, um, where she ended up doing things like singing with drag queens and she has developed a new type of spirituality based on tantric voice lessons. So all the way live from Tel Aviv, Israel, Mia <laughs> Solomon and the singing rabbi. Hi, Leah. Hey, Leah. You look great. Oh, no. Yeah, there you go. Hi. Yeah, that's it. Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Coming through loud and clear. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're jumping right in. All right, right, jump right on in there. All right, we're going to welcome the angels. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Ashalom, Malachi Elyon, Mi Melech, Malachi Hamlachim, Hakadosh Baruch. We welcome the angels here to Tel Aviv tonight in the darkness at 2.30 a.m. I figured I'd need them for this show and they've been with me so much my whole life. They were with me at the time of my aorta tear operation in my heart. They had to open me up and take out my heart and put me on a lung machine that would breathe for me for the seven hours during that operation. This all happened in the Palm Springs Desert Heart Hospital. I survived. It's the very dangerous operation. Most people die on the table. So I know that my angels were there. And I never knew what that song meant. All my life I'd sang it. I've been a Jew since I'm born, but I never knew what it meant. And I, um, and I, my lung collapsed during that operation. So for four months, I was in the hospital in Los Angeles. I was moved to Cedar sinai and I wasn't getting better. And my lung just wouldn't get strong. I was doing all of these exercises. I had some machine I had to blow into and <clears throat> nothing would happen with my lungs. And my brothers and my children said, mom, try harder. You know, you can do it. And I knew it wasn't happening. So I finally asked God and the goddess and the angels and everyone up there in heaven. I said, what do I need to do in this lifetime? What can I possibly do and be of service if these lungs get restored? And I went to sleep that night and I saw gold light and white light. And then I heard Sing, sing for your people. And I knew that my people were the Jewish people. And I thought, well, I can do that uh, because I've always wanted to be a cantor, but I never had the courage to do it. So I got off of this lung machine after that encounter with the goddess. And I was able to um, start my journey. I went to Cantor Beth at Manhattan Beach Synagogue in Los Angeles in Manhattan Beach. And um, I started to learn how to sing. They were teaching people in the congregation. And I got up there and I started to sing. And afterwards she came up to me and whispered, if you're gonna do this, 
you have got to learn to read better Hebrew. Oh my gosh, goddess. I know she's right. It's true. I don't really understand what I'm saying. I say everything by rote and I don't read very well. I can't even speak Hebrew. So I decided I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make citizenship. There's an organization called Nefesh Benefesh, which means soul to soul. And they help you become a citizen of Israel if you're Jewish. You just have to prove that you're Jewish and fill out a lot of paperwork. Takes a, mm, several months and then you can become a citizen. So I thought that's what I'm going to do. And I got here and here I am. Last year I became a citizen and I was so excited, but I found out that my people, the Jews were not very spiritual. They were either very, very spiritual and orthodox or they were absolutely not even believing in God. So there didn't seem to be a lot of the variation that we have in between um, reform, the, the three R's of Judaism. We have reform, we have, we have uh, um, uh, 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 reconstructionist renewal. We have conservative Judaism. We have all these kinds of Judaism. We have conservadox. But worse than that, we have such prejudice and racism among Jews. It's no wonder we can't even get along with the Arabs. We're brothers with the Arabs. The tribe of Ishmael, they got, they got lost and they say that they may have gone on to become the Muslim religion. So that's how close we are with the Arabs and we can't get along. But let me tell you, with the Jews, we have the Ashkenazi Jews like me, Russian, Romanian, Polish, Eastern European, white Jews. This, then we have the Sephardic, Moroccan, Spanish, Ar Argentinian, Colombian. And then there's the Mizrahi Jews who are Egyptian, Algerian, Libyan, Iraqi and their food is the best. And then we have the Yemenites and the Ethiopian Jews. There's so many Jews, there's Chinese Jews. I never, there's even a museum called Beit Hatsufot, which means museum of the D diaspora. So naturally I was a little bit shocked uh, at what I found here, but because I became a citizen, I learned to have hope. And the national anthem is called Hatikva. So I just want to sing a few lines of Hatikva. Any of you that know it, sing it with me. By the way, I'm not a rabbi. My show is called The Singing Rabbi because when I wanted to become a cantor, a cantorial soloist, that's someone who hasn't gone to become ordained for five years, people didn't know what I was talking about. They'd say, huh? So I finally said, you know, a singing rabbi. And they were like, oh, right, okay, you wanna be a singing rabbi. I was like, yes, now I know at age 60, this is my life's purpose. So, um, I, I uh, decided when I first got to Israel that I would spend time with the, in Orthodox homes in Jerusalem. I was invited into many Shabbats. I learned different ways of praying and the way that I was raised more, more thorough. I went to the Western Wall. I went to the, which we call the Kotel in Hebrew. And 
said many prayers. I visited the disputed territory of the Temple Mount, which is also called the Al-Aqsa Mosque or Hara Esh Sharif. And it's also, a, there's a Christian church on that same spot, all three in one. And I, I got to see these holy sites and experience the Muslims in their holy sites and the Christians. And that's the beautiful thing about the old city of Jerusalem. You have four quarters, a Muslim quarter, a Christian quarter, a Jewish quarter. And my most interesting trip when I first got here was a trip with Abraham Hostel to Hebron. Hebron is another disputed territory. It's in the West Bank. Jews are no longer allowed, Jews are kind of, they're allowed to go there, but it's sort of forbidden to tour the, um, the, the tomb of the patriarchs, which is one of the, the Jewish holiest sites. And it's also a holy site for the Muslims. So the first half of the day, you go with a Jewish settler and he takes you around and shows you and talks to you and tells you all the reasons why the Jews should be there. And then you have lunch with a Palestinian young boy, about 30, and he tells you all the reasons why the Palestinians belong there. And at the beginning of the tour, they tell you you're gonna be more confused than when you ever got there. And the truth is, we were more confused. You end up loving both sides, both people, when it's, when it's people to people, it's all about humanity. It's not about the right, it's about the people. And, you, and um, then I went on an amazing tour to the Galilee, which was a, another pilgrimage towards the Dead Sea and the Jordan River, where they say Peter betrayed Jesus and walked on water. And it, I was sitting at the waterfall and listening to the water and an entire group of Christian pilgrims came around me with their Bibles and started praying and praying to Jesus, praying to Peter. And I got to witness this. I felt spirituality is within all of us. Doesn't matter what is your race, creed, religion, we're all one. And then I took another trip up to the up to Tiberius. Apparently, I didn't know this, but all Orthodox Jews make these incredible pilgrimages up to the graves of famous rabbis, famous rabbis from Russia that have come here and changed the world. One of them being the the rabbi the rabbi the Azal, and the rabbi Azal is in Spot. Spot is one of the holiest cities of Israel. It's where they say the Kabbalah in the 1600s began. So when I got to Sfat, I stayed at a Chabad house, a place called Ascent, and we had classes, GPS for the soul, Kabbalah 101. Uh, we had these things that are, that are um, Yiddish called for bringing where people came and sing and brought their guitars and we sang religious songs by the waterfalls. And I just kept thinking, what is this fascination with the dead that we are going to visit these rabbis? It reminded me of Day of the Dead in Mexico where people spread out blankets and bring a picnic and commune with their ancestors. It was really amazing to see the crossover of the tradition. Um, it also reminded me of a ceremony I had visited in Haiti when I had been to a voodoo ceremony and the spirits asked the priestess that I was working with to have me usher in the soul to the heaven. And suddenly my grandmother came down to me and said, I really don't know what you're doing with this voodoo, but it seems to be safe. It seems to be okay. And later I found out that in the Jewish tradition, we have a ceremony called Tachava, and it's when you wash the body and prepare it for it, burial, you do this kind of ushering in the soul as well. Well, finally, 
I got to Tel Aviv. And in Tel Aviv, I found this urban kibbutz. It had 30 people in it, volunteers from all around the world, some Israelis, German, French, Spanish, um, most common language was English, sadly for me, because it takes longer to learn your Hebrew. But we had a communal kitchen and every Friday night, we'd go to the market and we'd get vegetables and we'd all cook together and have a meal. There were artists, musicians, uh, theater people, psychodrama people. My son would say, my hippie friends, I found my tribe. Um, and we started to do performances and sing. And then suddenly one of the guys, the artistic director started working at a rooftop piano bar in Jaffa with drag queens. And I found myself very happy among the drag queens. I don't know, there seems to be a lot of correlation between middle-aged women and drag queens. I think it's acceptance, love, and the ability to really know oneself. Um, and actually, th at this time, it reminded me of the Lady Gaga movie where she started out singing with the drag queens because that, they accepted her when Hollywood didn't. Um, and the song I sang there, one of the songs, I, I sang many, was the Nina Simone song, To Every Season. Well, it's actually was done by um, a rock group before Nina Simone, but she was my inspiration. Um, to everything turn, turn, turn. There is a season, turn, turn, turn. A time to everything. Mm -hmm. Then Corona hit and the world was upside down. Here I am looking at my belly button, exploring my chakras with a Tantra voice workshop. I started to find my inner creativity, something I didn't seem to be able to find in the States. Reminds me of Gertrude Stein. She used to say, I love to be alone with my English in Paris. And it was kind of like that here in Tel Aviv. And I started to go through different spiritual journeys in my life that, that I had been through. And I wanted to do a little bit of that, show you a little bit of that now. I lived in Haiti and I had attended a ceremony in the woods out in a umfor, and we began to sing to the god of the underworld, Baron Samdi. He was the guardian, and to the Gede, and we would do the banda and sing. I'm wearing the straw hat because that's what Gede wore. And they always dressed in red for the underworld, red and black. Here I am. And I learned a lot from the Haitians how to call in the gods and the goddesses. They have a whole pantheon of gods, just like the Greeks, just like the Romans. Erzali, the one I just sang about, she was the goddess of love. And I traveled this journey of the, the Afro-Haitian, Afro-Cuban world, 
uh, when I went to, I seemed to just get invited to places that when I got to Cuba, they said, oh, please come to this ceremony at the, near the Santeria Museum, right? On the outskirts of Havana. So I went and people were dressed in white with gowns for initiation, all the women, the priestesses. And, we, and I was able to participate in one day, it's usually a seven day ceremony, was the same in Haiti. So Santeria um, and it, it, it was the same. And so I knew what, what was happening and they were becoming uh, initiates of the voodoo. This was the, um, and the, and uh, sa, um, uh, the uh, African uh, slaves were all taken to Haiti, Cuba, and Brazil, which is another spot that I was able to visit. And when I got to Brazil, it was New Year's, and it was a big Yemenja ceremony. Yemenja, she's the goddess of the water, Yemenya. And we sang Yemenya, Yemenya, Oale, Oh, Baish Nush. We asked her to just take away all our pain and bring it out to the sea. And this was um, not a private ceremony like it had been in Haiti. It was one that was all along the sea, the border of the sea, and all the Brazilians were out. It was New Year's after all. And then I wanted to show you that... Uh, when, when, um, I kind of went across the waters and landed on another spiritual journey, which is why I think my angels wanted me finally to come home to my Judaism. But in the meantime, I'm still traveling. And I'm in Bali suddenly. And in Bali, I'm wearing a mask because we're doing the monkey dance. The monkey is Hanuman. Hanuman. Chuck, 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 chuck. Imagine 35 men sitting around a fire, all being a monkey, all being a guardian for the community. But I hung out with the kids and I went to the sea. And when I went to the sea, we sang a song together. Once again, learning another spirituality, taking it in my heart from another culture. And then to the Middle East. I took a journey, a priestess journey to the Giza Plaza with the three pyramids in Cairo. And I was ushered into the queen's chamber. And in the queen's chamber, she said, go, you're getting your initiation. I said, what? I went in and something took over and I did a dance with wings. I flew. And when she saw me, she said, that's the dance that the ancient goddesses did. That's the dance that they did in the time of Isis and Hatshepsut. We visited those temples as well in upper Egypt. 
And that's where there was healing and prayer and the arts. All of this, all of this I wanted to bring back to this world and didn't know how when I was traveling as a young girl. And now it seems that this is the place that I'm bringing it all together here in Israel. And I'm working with the priestesses from the Kohenet group and, and trying to learn a new kind of spirituality and see if maybe all of these secular Jews here in Israel want to really open their hearts. We all need to pray. We all need to come more together. So I want to sing this song with all of you, which is um, maybe some of you know it. it um, it's, it's about peace. And it's calling in peace. Odivo shalom aleinu. Odivo shalom aleinu. Odivo shalom aleinu. Be'atuka. Arabic salam. Aleinu ve'alko ha'olam. Salam. Salam, shalom. Aleinu ve'al kol ha'olam. Salam, salam. So this is a call for peace and prayer. And uh, I also wanted to leave us with another amazing song that I didn't know what it meant until I started to come here. Can you imagine your whole life? You sing these songs, you pray, and you really don't know what they mean. You just know them by rote. So here it is. He, it's a song about standing up for oneself and standing up for what you believe. And God only knows that's where we are today. We're all standing up in the world for, for brotherhood and sisterhood and try to find peace and love amongst all of us. And if the singing rabbi can't bring it, we got to bring it. Kiva moed, kiva moed, kiva moed, kiva moed. So it seems that because it's 2.30 in the morning, I have raced through my, my piece and I'm actually done. So if there's any questions, is there any way that people could ask me questions? I would love to use the rest of the time to have some kind of an interactive discussion with all of you since I'm kind of alone here. <laughs> hey, Leah. Actually, we are actually a little bit behind in our schedule, but um, we can, when we post your video, we can also point, we can also post a, a, um, an email or a website and people that want to contact you about that, we're more than happy to have them do that. I want okay, to thank perfect. you for that, that, that long spiritual journey. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it must be great to feel yourself at home in Tel Aviv. Yeah, so, it's still going on. It's still going on and the Hebrew's coming along. So thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. You have a great night, okay? Yeah, and thank it. you. Thank you for staying up so late with us. It's uh, what, 310 there now? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm gonna get online and watch everything because I'm so wired with the coffee. All yeah. right. Oh, bye. 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 Thank you so much, Leah. You say I'm living on the fray. I say I'm living on the fringe.